You know, as a type 2 diabetic, I'm always trying to inform people who've been diagnosed that with the proper diet and exercise and medication and insulin, uh, it can be maintained. But it'd be, it'd be a lot worse for me if I was type 1. Type 1 can be a, a much more difficult situation because uh, childhood diabetes uh, had killed a lot of people a lot of years. Now, over the years, there's been a lot of celebrities and a lot of major league athletes that have been on the front lines with diabetes awareness, including Mary Tyler Moore, Bobby Clark, and recent years, Max Domi. But the person, I think, in Canada, especially that was, uh, not say underrated, but was unheralded in his information campaign, uh, on the type 1 diabetes was a player for the Montreal Expos who probably came into Major League Baseball as an underrated prospect but he made a major impact right away by breaking the world record for strikeouts for a rookie Major League pitcher. Today we're going to be talking about the pride of Marshall, Minnesota and our good friend the channel Andrew Leppert uh, made the uh, request uh, Andrew, uh, thank you for that, but I was going to do something on him a couple of weeks ago, but because of the uh, situation with uh, the protests in Canada, I was uh, busy offline with uh, covering that, but I'm glad I can get to it today. Bill Gullickson, now born William Lee Gullickson again in Marshall, Minnesota, February 20, 1959. Uh, he's very unique because he's played uh, pro ball not only in Canada, the States, but also Japan. He was a sensation over there who has still lasted at a major impact. Now, he had an 18-year pro career, 14 seasons in Major League Baseball. Now, when he was drafted, it was probably one of the better drafts uh, Montreal had in the late 1970s. He was selected as a second player to be taken in the first round of June 77 Major League Baseball draft. Now, he was taken out of Joliet Catholic Academy in Joliet, Illinois, and boys, oh boys, did he get a lot of media coverage uh, right after. He eventually made the Expos and uh, uh, finished second behind Steve Howe in the National League Rookie of the Year voting in 1980. After a season, he, when he went 10-15 and 15 with an ERA of 3. He also set a Major League record for strikeouts in a game by a rookie with 18. He held that record for 18 years until Kerry Wood broke it with 20 in 98. Now, Gullickson held the Montreal Expos Washington Nationals all-time strikeout record for a single game with 18 until, of all people, Max Scherzer broke the record in 2016. In 81, he helped the Expos their only division title with a 7-9, 2.081 record. Uh, he helped the Expos to come within literally one inning of winning the banner, but he lost to uh, the Dodgers in Game 5 in the infamous Monday-on-Monday -Monday game. Now, except for the 81 strike season, Gullickson was in double figures in wins for every year onward. Very consistent. Again, good fastball, good movement on all these pitches, uh, consistent workhorse. Now, because he was... Uh, uh, determined in every inning he would give you five to seven innings almost every outing and he uh, he, ba he basically could work with any catcher behind the plate but Gary Carter really helped him uh, come along now on December 12 85 and Montreal was trying to do a shake up uh, Gullickson was acquired by the Reds along with catcher Sal Butera now the Reds send back pitchers Andy McGaffigan and John Stuper and catcher Dan Biardello to the Expos. Now with the Reds, he consider, considered uh, continuing his consistency. That season, he, in 86, he was 15-12 and 12 with ERA at 3.38. Now in 87, of all things, he found himself with the New York Yankees. He was 10-11 and 11 with the Reds when he was traded midseason to the Yankees again in 87 campaign. Now... Of all people, he, uh, of all things, he was traded to the Yankees on my birthday for Dennis Rasmussen. Uh, he helped him in their pennant drive. Now, he had a 4-2 record with the Yankees, but he was unhappy there. Th Tommy Jones thought the intense media coverage and high expectations of New York fans proved difficult for Gullickson to adjust. And uh, in 88, he decided to leave North America and accepted a $2 million offer to pitch in Japan for the Yumari Giants after being granted free agency on November 9th, 87. Now, Gullickson stayed with the Giants for two full seasons with a record of 21-14. and 14. Kajushugi Nagashima, the son of Japanese baseball legend Shigeo Nagashima, got the first hit in his professional career, a home run off Gullickson. 
When asked about his time in Japan, Gullickson said it was strange, as the only English words that he saw there were Sari and Mitsubishi, Sony and Mitsubishi. Although uh, only in Japan for a short time, Gullickson left behind, again, a very positive legacy. When he was in Japan, it was considered a miracle that Gullickson, a patient with type 1 diabetes, played a professional sport. Since 98, the Japanese Japan Diabetes Mellitus Society, Jag, uh, JAGMASI, has awarded the Gullickson Award for the, for the patient who was deemed a superior influence on society. Now, while in Japan, Gullickson also developed the clone's friendship for young Japanese pitcher Musumi Kawada and even naming his son Craig Kawada Gullickson in his honor. Kawada learned uh, many things from Gullickson and grew to be one of the best players in Japan. Meanwhile, Kawada had always wished to play in Major League Baseball, and at last, this dream was realized in 2007 as he became a member of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Nearly 20 years after meeting Gullickson, Kawada became a Major League Baseball rookie at the age of 39. Now, at the age of 12, Sam Fuld, the aspiring baseball player who also had diabetes, met Gullickson and talked to him for two minutes. That wasn't enough to inspire me, Fuld said. Anytime I can talk to a young diabetic kids, I'll look forward to the opportunity, said Gullickson. Fuld went on to way and play eight seasons in the major leagues. Now, when he came back to North America, he signed as a free agent with the Astros, uh, in the after the '89 campaign, going 10 and 14 in 1990 after being released. Now, the uh, the rebirth of his career came short after. Now, late 1990, he signed a multi-million dollar contract for the Tigers, for whom he pitched for four seasons. While with the Tigers, he met a young boy who was then 12, who also had diabetes, and uh, talked to him for two minutes. Of course, this was Fult. Now, in '91. Gullickson had a career-high 20 wins against 9 losses, leading the American League in wins and placing 8 in the AL Cy Young Award. The Tigers would not have another 20-game winner until Justin Verlander in 2011. Gullickson tallied another 11, 14 wins in 92, 13 wins in 93, but in 94, the 35-year-old Gullickson was forced to retire due to injuries after posting a 4-5 and record in 19 starts. Now, He's not the only talented member of his family. This is kind of, kind of bizarre. Even I didn't know this. I just researched this recently. Now, uh, Gullickson is married to uh, his beautiful wife, Sandy Gullickson. Their six children are, are also involved in sports or other physically intensive endeavors. Now, uh, Casey Gullickson was on the track and field team at the University of Notre Dame. Carly Gullickson was a pro tennis player whose highest world ranking with sport in singles was 123 and in doubles in, as number 52. She won the, the U.S. Open Mixed Doubles in 2009. She's now retired and is currently a stay-at-home mom. Now, Chelsea Gullickson won the 2010 NC Division I's Men's Singles Tennis title for the University of Georgia. Now, Craig Gullickson was a stand-up pitcher at Carlton Newman High School, where he was one of the best pitchers in the state of Florida. He received a scholarship to play for Clemson after his performance in a high school all-star game. Now, Kaylee Gullickson is a strength, strength instructor at Peloton. She's a former dancer and model, and she attended Pace University in New York City. Now, Chloe Gullickson is, is another tennis player and was number two in Florida and highly nationally ranked. She received a full scholarship to the University of Virginia. Now, all I knew with Bill Gullickson when he was in Montreal, getting back to the Expo days, boys, he was very popular. What he really tried to do uh, in his career in Montreal was what you see is what you get, because he had a lot of stars at the time, Rogers and Dawson and Reigns and Carter and, uh, you know, uh, Wallach and... Uh, uh, all, all the young prospects and stuff like that. But Gullickson was a workmanlike player, uh, a gentleman true and true. And his final career record, if he would have played another four seasons, he would have got into Major League Baseball recognition. But the big problem with Gullickson, again, he had that chance at a World Series in 81, and it was um, some uh, some tough games down the stretch that really hurt Montreal, and I think really hurt him in the, the playoffs. Now, Final career uh, record, 162-136, uh, 3.93 ERA with 1,279 strikeouts. And again in Japan, 21-14, 329 and 231 uh, strikeouts. Now, the right-hander, again, uh, led the AL wins in 91. And that alone is kind of amazing because that was the, the year of the pitcher in, uh, in the AL and uh, for him to lead 
was pretty bizarre. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Montreal Expo fan favorite, a fan favorite everywhere he went. Uh, Japan, Detroit, uh, whatever, Houston. Uh, Yankees didn't give enough of a chance, but like Tommy John said, maybe it was a little bit too much too much for him. If you like what we're doing here, we're a Major League Baseball Vintage Podcast. Let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. And if you're an Expo fan of the late 70s, early 80s, boys, Bill Gullickson, uh, the name just brings back a lot of positive memories because that young pitching staff that he had to augment Rogers really helped us out with almost winning three consecutive uh, AL East uh, titles, uh, losing to the Pirates at the end for the banner in 79, losing to the Phillies for the banner at the end in 1980, and finally overcoming the Phillies in uh, 81 in a strike short in the season. Again, uh, Gillickson was a big part of that legacy, either as an up-and-coming prospect or like a, like a rookie or freshman uh, player. Thanks for listening, Andrew. Thanks again. Anybody has any requests, don't be scared. Uh, we didn't reason because if it's, a, if it's a player that was on the fifth line for the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1921, it might be hard. But if I can find it, I'm going to present it. Thanks for listening. Bye.